Hey, what's going on guys? It's Tom and welcome to the very first Notorious EDC podcast. That's right. I'm adding yet another podcast to the mix of an already way oversaturated market, but I am excited for it because it's been something that I've wanted to do for a few years now. And last year during the Pandy Wandy, I actually started a podcast for my regular life, not my knife and tool life, but uh, I just kind of wanted to do it again because it was actually pretty fun. I just stopped doing that one because there was a million reasons. But anyway, this is way more fun for me. I get to talk about gear and I get to chat with friends. I've met so many cool people and collectors and makers over the years of being involved in this everyday carry world. So I'm super excited to do this. And I think for this first episode, I wanted to give a little bit of background on myself and how I got into the EDC world and how I let this hobby consume my life and everything around me. <laughs> and one of the reasons I also wanted to do this podcast is because Instagram has been feeling a little bit stale lately. I don't know if it's just me and my posts are trash now, but I don't really have the engagement that I used to. And it's not that I am fixated on getting X amount of likes. I just feel like not as many people are seeing my stuff. And I feel like that kind of is a, is a bummer. It just feels like if no one's seeing it, then what's the point of posting it? It becomes a journal at that point. But I don't know. I just feel like years ago it used to be more of a conversation. Facebook groups were more of a conversation. And now it's just someone yelling the word flashlight at me for me to which is a, which is code for what flashlight is in this picture, even though it's in the caption, it's in the hashtags, the makers tag. I don't know what else you guys want, you know, just, <laughs> just look at the caption. But anyway, I wanted to explain how I kind of got to where I am now in my collecting life and where it all stemmed from. So that way you guys might have a better understanding of how my mind ticks with the EDC stuff. So without further ado, if you know me at all, then you know that I am a photographer by trade. And with being a photographer, just like any other job, there is a set of tools and stuff that you need to bring with you every day. My stuff is more or less the same, but there is some variety depending on if I'm at my studio or if I'm on location or if I'm at a brand space. So there's some different things that I'll need depending on where I'm going. And this kind of all started even before I got into the business, like when I was in school and I just loved the idea of having a pocket knife. I don't know why there was no Amazon back then. So there's no boxes to open. I really don't know why I carried a knife around, but it just felt great. I really can't explain it. And I'm sure you guys have the same feeling. And when someone asks you why you have a knife, you just, you can't explain it either. You're just like, I don't know. They're just sweet. I love them. So that's pretty much how that all started. I got this really cool Smith & Wesson Homeland Security knife. I mean, wow, Homeland Security. This sounds serious. It's a tip down knife, so it's not that serious, but... It's got speed holes in it and it's like a three and a quarter inch blade. It's actually a really nice knife for whatever the 35 bucks I'm sure that I paid for it back in 2003 or 2004 at Big Five in Santa Barbara, California. But I'm glad I still have it because it's, you know, it's a little piece of history for me. I can't believe that I still kept it even though I am a pack rat. So I think I keep probably way too much stuff. So I went to photo school and then I got into the business. And when you first start out, you're usually an assistant. And I noticed a lot of guys would have a lot of like different gadgets and tools and stuff. And one of the things that I noticed a lot was a Leatherman or a multi-tool of some sort. And I always thought like, wow, I was like blown away. Like, wow, this guy, he's really got everything figured out. Like he's MacGyver, he's Johnny on the spot. And that always kind of appealed to me because I like to feel helpful and I like to feel like I can solve problems and I just want to be the guy that, oh yeah, I have this thing that can solve this. You know what I mean? So I basically ended up picking up a Leatherman and that's something that I kind of kept with me. But you also need in photography, you need like a marker so you can write notes on uh, tape and stuff like that. A flashlight's kind of nice. 
and especially this was before smartphones. So I don't think phones even had like flashlights on them back then. So little by little, I start collecting this gear and I notice that now I have myself a little kit. Wow. Wow, Tom, you have some batteries. You have a Leatherman. You got a marker. The world is yours. You are Mr. Prepared. So all this stuff felt really good. And I always felt like I could take care of all the little things that seem to constantly come up. Because if you do something every day and there's always some sort of need that arises, it makes sense to just carry the thing that solves that problem all the time. It just, why wouldn't you? So eventually fast forward to, I start shooting a little bit and I'm transitioning away from assisting. And I remember I was shooting in my mom's garage. This is before I had my own studio. And I was making something float with fishing line, which is something that we have done a million times. And for some reason, I didn't have anything with me. And this is before, again, this is pre-EDC. I had EDC, but I didn't know what EDC was. And I feel like a lot of us have been there, right? So I take the fishing line and instead of cutting it with a knife or scissors, I bit it and I cracked my tooth a little bit. I chipped it and my dentist was like, what are you doing? Why would you bite through this? Didn't you have scissors or something like that? And I didn't. I felt so stupid and it kind of sent me down this whole wormhole, rabbit hole, whatever of EDC. And I remember I started obsessing over the idea of getting some stuff, getting some gear. And this is 2014 at this point. So I don't know if you guys are newer to the EDC world. If you are, like if you joined like Instagram EDC last year in 2020 or something, cause right now it's December in 2021. So if you're new ish, then you're very spoiled because there's a million different knives and gear and all this stuff to choose from and pictures all look amazing. Everyone's like a photographer now and it's like, it's really amazing to see the level of the EDC world on social media now compared to when I got into it in 2014, 2015, because back then I think hashtags were out at that point because that's how I met a lot of people, but it was just wild how terrible, it was just wild how terrible people's pictures looked. I mean, terrible. It literally looked like charcoal sketches, etch-a-sketch, barbecued, the Lux filter was on 100, it was just wild. It didn't look good at all, but anyway, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> the point is, I was going to YouTube, and one of the people that I need to thank for even getting me into the EDC world is nothing fancy. And I know a lot of people have something to say about him, but I don't know, whatever. Say whatever you want about him, but at the end of the day, this guy was putting out a ton of great videos showing all the specs and all the different, what he would call philosophies of use of different knives and stuff like that. And there was another guy called Cutlery Lover as well, who was uh, big at that time. I, I don't really, I mean, now Nick Shabazz is the guy, I would say. And Nick has a lot of really great videos. And I find myself agreeing with like 95 out of 100 things that Nick says. So whenever I have a question about a video, I actually look it up through him first. So shout out to Nick Shabazz. But anyway, I would look up nothing fancy videos and I would start to get like, crazy like i need this knife i need this and that whatever and then i start you know i buy my first nice knife which is the benchmade mini grip and back then that was like one of a few really nice knives and this is what i'm saying when i say you guys that just got into the game are spoiled because back then it was like you had benchmade you had strider hinderer and chris reeve of course and it was like pretty much the the holy trinity then if you were dreaming about a collection would be a sabenza an smg and a hinderer xm or whatever back then when i first started i was like wow did i just spend a hundred dollars on a knife like this is nuts absolutely nuts i don't remember how much the mini grip cost maybe it was like 80 bucks i thought i was out of my mind and you know what? Obviously, as we all know, <laughs> we've all been there and thought, I'm never going to spend X amount of money on a knife. And we've all told this lie to ourselves so many times before. And it's all good because you end up buying that knife and then saying, this is the, this is the line now. 
$300 is the limit. I'm never going over this. That's it. And then you start seeing the customs and then you start saying, well, if I just sold a couple of these high-end production knives, I could buy one custom. And then you do that. And then you just, you keep going down this crazy rabbit hole. Or maybe you don't, maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm just bad at life. I don't know, whatever. But I had a great time spending a few years learning about all these makers, making really great friends through social media, going to a couple of knife shows, learning about those makers in person, getting to meet them, check out all the stuff that I had been lusting over on social media in real life, which was really nice. And like I mentioned, beyond knives, I like to keep kits because I'm in a different place all the time. So it was really nice to have modular stuff. Maxpedition and VanQuest pouches became my life. I was so obsessed with having modular kits. I had a kit for cables. I had a kit for my tools. I had a kit for random prop stuff. Like I would have extra tack and pins and you know set stuff that was like tape measure like a tiny t i was obsessed with what's the smallest tape measure i could fit in this pouch i have to find it it just became a whole hobby in itself with that and one other thing i was gonna say this is something that drives me absolutely nuts and i don't know maybe it's just me you guys let me know but one of the things i absolutely loved when i was first getting into edc was researching stuff I think it was because I had no choice. Like I said, now everything is so prevalent. There's so much gear out there and there's so many people in the EDC world on social media. Whereas in 2014, 2015, it was literally like Conestoga wagon frontiersman times for EDC on social media. You really had to do a lot of homework and I had to like screenshot a flashlight and try and figure out the brand and then go to the brand's website and then match the picture to the model on the website and go through all this stuff. Whereas now I could literally list every single detail of everything in my picture, hashtag it with the relevant hashtags, like not even just a brand name, but the brand and the model and tag the um, maker on the post. And I'll still get someone that's like, flashlight what what kind is it just look it's literally right there anyway sorry i get upset so fast forward <laughs> so fast forward to like 2017 i go to blade show and that's my first blade show i'm there with my buddy chris reader aka kingpin so i'm i'm with kp and he hooks me up with my first custom knife and I got another custom knife there as well from Dr. T. And I just really, really went down the rabbit hole of custom stuff after that. And I just was, I had an insatiable thirst for custom <laughs> knives. And it was just nuts because you just end up accumulating all this stuff and all logic goes out the window. And this was a, definitely a conversation for another podcast, but the conversation of, a tool versus a collection piece because there's two different schools of thought you know do you have a pm2 or a para 3 that you beat to death and it's like a hundred whatever dollars or do you have a thousand dollar custom knife that you just take out for instagram and you never really use it because you're scared to put a scratch on it because you don't want to devalue it for when you sell it. So it's just, there's like these two schools of thought and I'm not making fun of either because I exist. I have a foot in each camp. I mean, I sold a lot of my custom stuff over the years, the past year or two, I would say I, I kind of purged most of it. Cause I'm just, I'm just kind of tired of that endless cycle of looking for new stuff and then selling it and then buying new stuff. It just felt like a job. And I'm kind of at the point where I don't want to make more work for myself in that sense. I just want to enjoy what I have. I want to buy something that serves a purpose. And I also want to buy cool stuff that I really enjoy the aesthetic of, but I don't really want to spend so much money on custom stuff because I found over the years that it it's, looks really nice, but sometimes it doesn't really hit the mark. And then you get disappointed, you know, the action's a little off. 
the fit and finish is a little off. Very rarely do I feel like the dollar amount of a knife, does it actually live up to what it is? And I think that going through the, the motions of that for a couple of years and getting let down over and over again, you end up feeling like, you know what? Maybe this Benchmade Mini Bug Out is actually the best knife I have because it's priced amazing. It's made in the USA. So something made in the USA at that price and it performs really well. It does its job. I can drop it on concrete and not even think twice about it. It's just all these little things that I had to go around the corner and think about again to figure out. But beyond, like I said, beyond all the knife stuff and the pouches, and now pouches are going crazy. Like everyone has so much cool stuff to choose from now. It's bananas. The rain dries are going nuts. Patches, when I got into the game, patches, back in my day, patches were terrible. They really were. They were so dumb. There was like four patches. They were all like some like stupid joke from some movie that wasn't even funny. And it's like, I don't know, just some dumb stuff. You know what I mean? Now everyone has these really cool patches. There's references to all the nostalgic stuff from when we were younger. I feel like the whole EDC game has come so far. There's just so much cool stuff to choose from. I'm just glad that it evolved into what it did because I think that having so many options is amazing. I think everyone being able to take these unbelievable pictures and like put so much effort into it, it makes me feel like I'm slacking because I do this every day for work. So the last thing I really want to do anymore is set up some stylized shot. That's why I post so many hand dumps because I'm just, I just want to keep it simple. You know, I did all the stylized shots I could possibly do. I used to post five pictures a day in like 2015, 2016. It was absolutely bananas absolutely bananas i'm just glad that i kept with it because i got to meet like i said so many cool people and it's been a great ride so so yeah i'm just looking forward to chatting about all these different topics revolving around edc because there's so many different topics why do i like small knives blade steels do they matter is flipping good or bad there's just so many different things pry bars who even uses them you know there's just there's just so much stuff so so i'm really excited i have so many people i want to talk to and i'm just really looking forward to it all I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thank you for listening and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.